Ah, <laughs> that's <Hello>. the start. <laughs> wow. Welcome to another episode of Gina's Pool. It is right now Gina's Pool in Barcelona with the wonderful Rodri. Rodri. Hey, everyone. Rodri, <laughs> tenemos que comprar una lechuga. <laughs> mm. You know, that's what Duolingo teaches you, right? Yes. Tenemos que comprar una lechuga. That's, what, that's how Jessica introduced to me. Yes, because I'm a native Spanish speaker, exactly. of course. Welcome to Gina's Pool, everyone. Yeah, we welcome. have an amazing guest today. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Same. And, <laughs> yes. And the, the, the most funny thing is, like the most exciting thing is, you don't know each other. That's correct. Oh, That's right. but I think we have a good time here in our little warm jacuzzi. I guess, yeah, yes. we, we talked we talk for a bit before this. Um, and already I have the feeling you're one of the most diverse people I've ever met. Well, I, I, I actually really like that adjective, you know? Yeah. I think that diversity is what holds us together. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was really excited to get this invite. Like, thank you very, very much, you guys. Yeah. Of um, course, I'm so happy you're here because you have a lot of crazy and nice and important things <laughs> to tell. And I'm sorry, the sun. Is <laughs> 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 I don't want to be rude and unpersonal, but I have you're to not. wear the shades and th because the sun, the Barcelona sun in the end of, of October, strong. Uh, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you wanted to emphasize that it's the end of October and Barcelona sun. <laughs> It's still pool season here. It's <laughs> still pool season, yes. <laughs> okay. But still we have serious stuff to talk about. Yes. Not only the vacaciones and the drinks and the sun. That's correct. We but before have. we get to serious things, the first thing we have to introduce, because we always have a favorite drink of our guest. What did you bring us today? So I was definitely going to mention that, because this is, you know when you feel really, really pampered and really, really welcome? This is definitely one of those scenarios. Um, we're having espresso martinis today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah. There you go. Gra the glass Gracias. is half empty, half full. I'm sorry. The glass is always half full. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that again in your most voice acting voice? Mm, it's always half full. Oh. Uh, <laughs> cheers. So cheers. I'm a happy girl right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are so good. They are so good. It's a good one. And they're not improvised at all. No, they're not improvised. <laughs> I, like I tried my best. The first one was horrible this morning. We tried it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was like too much alcohol, too like super strong. And now I think we have the perfect mixture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this version is also 3.0. Also strong. Especially Martini 3.0. Yes. Svartvit. Yeah. Svartvit Martini. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Yes. No, I think this drinks fits you. I don't know. It does. It yeah. does, yes. Mm. Because Were you surprised when I mentioned it was this one? Because and no, I wasn't me. surprised at all, okay. <laughs> to be honest. No, I, I wasn't see. surprised. But it's like, it's a special drink. Yeah. And you don't need that much. But <laughs> the things who are in the, which are inside are... <laughs> so you're saying you don't need that much? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's a special drink. Yes, it is. And you need a special taste for it. Not, not everyone is into espresso martini at yes. all. It's I, an, acqu an acquired taste. Yes. It is an acquired taste. Okay. Yeah. So. I would personally say I acquired it um, in the Amalfi Coast. Because Ooh. it's like, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's, that already, and that goes, goes <laughs> with what you're saying. This fits you very well. That sounds very <laughs> elegant. Right. And when I met you for the first time, I think an hour ago on the door downstairs, uh -huh. <laughs> when I got crushed ice and you were getting <laughs> here, um, my first impression was, okay, he's very elegant. Um, what I've seen... From that, before that, bef from you so far was only on the internet, on Instagram. Okay. Um, and what you do on your Instagram page, um, which is modeling. Um, a special quite kind a bit of modeling. A special I'd kind say. of modeling. Um, you should all check it out. It's <laughs> Rodri on the go, on the road. On the on road. The road. Rodri on the road. Rodri there you go. The I'd say that um, on the road more than on the go. Yeah. I like <laughs> to stay in places, but always on the road. Okay, we'll get to that as well. I want to talk about your modeling, but also I want to talk about everything, what, you, what you're doing. So it's a special kind of modeling. It's erotic modeling. You also work in corporate, so you okay. have a, a, a day job as well. You, you like to travel. Obviously, you lived in a lot of places. You speak, you educated me, <laughs> seven, seven languages. Seven. Um, I don't know if any of them are completely fluent. Oh, um, five of them are completely fluent. Okay. <laughs> Two of them, I'll tell you again, that I cannot write an email to a politician. 
yeah. to a lawyer. A lawyer. But yeah. I could definitely defend myself and <laughs> you know, pick someone up at a bar in Germany or Sweden. Yeah. No okay. Mm. So, but and you're only 29. Mm. That's I'm also, 28. Twenty. You're turning twenty nine. Yes. I'm turning twenty nine in wow. April. That's impressive. I <laughs> I never thought that I'd say that, but. You're younger than me. I, re- <laughs> I rarely meet people that are younger than me. I'm, uh, I'm I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So how does that all fit into one person? And with what did you get started first? I'm, I'm confused. How does that all fit into one person? That is, um, th- I guess that's a question that you should get. Yeah. And um, I, would, uh, I would attach it to two things. Um, innate ambition mm-hmm. um, but also of course the capability or the, um, the privilege of being able and supported while doing a bunch of stuff being super young mm-hmm. like, I do come from a family that um, wanted me to excel in a bunch of stuff uh, but that also gave me the blessing of a context that did allow me to grow uh, naturally as I said kind of like so I was born in Uruguay mm-hmm. uh, you know this this joke in The Simpsons that Homer uh, spins around the globe and points at a country and says, oh, look at this country. You are gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is perfect. Yeah. I, I explain to me, when people say, oh, Uruguay, what the heck is that? I, I usually pick up that, Never heard like, that reference. Be- yeah. yeah, it's like, I, it doesn't matter where it is. It's just, it, it, you can read it as you are gay if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was born in Uruguay, but with a strong Italian heritage, right? So my grandma and my mom used to like, speak Italian words and sometimes Italian Italian uh, to us. Mm -hmm. My grandma more than my mom, I'd say. Um, And then I also was educated bilingual. So at some point, again, I do believe that the fact that I went through so many stuff and learned so many things and and grew this fast at the young age, it's because I was allowed to. I was fostered to growth. And yet again, because of ambition, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because at some point, there is this feeling of race um, going on in the world. Constantly between people, and we, we yeah. were just mentioning it before. And your tribe, right? Um, you mentioned we mentioned, hey, there's room for everyone to grow and to shine and to like be themselves fully, even if you don't, you know, achieve a bunch of stuff uh, at a young age. Yeah, you can still like do you and uh, achieve the things you want to achieve. And yeah, and, uh, and there's there's space for you too, even if you're 35 and changing careers, right? But still, you need a lot of energy for this. So. How did you get all that energy, like, every day? Oh, that's a good question. Yes, because if I meet you, I'm, like, I'm always, like, surprised by that kind of energy you give to other people. <laughs> you are so full power and you're so ambitious with everything you do. And that's really impressive, I think. Mm-hmm. So Hello. tell me your secret, please. <laughs> I think um, it's what goes around comes around. You all know? right. It's about giving and, and receiving and being aware of that circle constantly. Um, the more energy you give out to everyone you're around and the more support you give out, the more support you're going to get, right? And the more energy you're going to get. Of course, it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, yeah. And it is definitely about something, I would say, innate as well. Mm-hmm. Um, some people call it astrology. I don't know, I'm an Aries. Or I don't know, this ah. tattoo means that I'm, I'm a yellow star in the Mayan kin, which has like 248 um, like signs, like horoscopical signs, as if you would... Like, uh, we have usually 12 in classics. This They have 248, and I'm a yellow star, specifically. Oh, right. Okay. Which means that I was born at a specific vibration of the sky that lasts, like, some time only, of, like, a very short time. Uh-huh. And according to them, according to the Mayans, because I'm Latin American. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, my mission is to unite and to uh-huh. explode. Like, you know, like, this yeah. feeling like... Yeah. Doing some ASMR here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, you know, I, I do feel like I've been kind of like lined up with that mission um, even before I knew it. When I read it, I was like, okay, that, that, that could sound like, that could yeah. sound like Rodri. That could yeah. definitely sound like So, me. you also choose the people you hang out with, like, wisely. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do I not? <laughs> no, but, like, some people, they come along with everyone. And I th- I'm sorry, this is my earring. Um... <laughs> But I think you are surrounded by people who, like, you you you, you fit to each other mm. somehow. But it's it's not it's. Um, how can I explain this? I don't know. You don't force. I don't, I, I don't know how to explain this. You Your meet people. Your attracts you. Drive. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Somehow. Somehow. Okay. Um, 
if I met you the first time, like all of a sudden I had a really feel, I had a feeling I could be myself. I don't have to act somehow. Yeah, yeah you can be like you are. And you don't, you, you, you just said, hello, how are you? Tenemos que comprar una lechuga. <laughs> and that's it actually. And I was really, I felt super comfy with you and like relaxed. And I really liked that. But I, I, I'm sure it's only, it's your vibe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is your vibe because I've just met you a few minutes ago or an hour ago and it definitely definitely is the case that when you meet I mean I have the gut feeling when I meet a person that I initially know that I can get comfortable with that person and be like yeah it's that's easy in the best way possible to to be with this person you know it's it's really nice it's really nice because you, you give off a lot of positive energy oh, I, I think you guys do too you know I think it's a Thank you. it's a matter of reverberation Yeah, as well. Like it happens with some people and it doesn't happen with others. And and, um, and there's some people that appreciate it and some people that don't. You know, the, I do True. believe that there's some people in this world that go around uh, appreciating conflict more than getting along. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, True. So yeah. some people would say, oh, no, yeah. Mm. They want conflict. They don't really want to get along. You guys yeah. want to get along. That's, uh, oh, yes, we don't. We are not into yeah. conflict. Yeah, no. as much new as... As it is on everyone else and yeah. as it is on me. So thank yeah. you for the appreciation. Of course. <laughs> yes. And I, I guess when when you have this attitude towards life, that when when you, you give off any positive energy, you get it ten times more back. And also when you come from from a family that is supporting everything you're doing, um, or you want to do, um, you don't have a certain kind of pressure that you have to adhere to where you're like, I have to fulfill um, not my needs, but their needs. And I have, I have to do this. I have to do that. And I have to accommodate to other people's wishes and um, expectations. Um, right. I think that is very liberating. I can, I can only imagine that, imagine mm. that is very liberating. I mean, don't get me wrong. My, so my mom, she's a therapist. She's a psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Actually, a family systemical therapist, which is like a specific kind of like gender of psychology, right? She works with family systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my dad, he's a businessman that used to be in the military. All right. <laughs> like that deserted in the military when, uh, when the dictatorship happened in Latin America, right? So I was like raised by... The, uh, and as I said, half of my family is from Mexico as well. So my brother was born in Mexico, but we all lived together like our whole lives, right? Yeah. It's a typical nuclear family from the outside, but definitely like not a nuclear family from the inside, right? One kid from one country, one kid from another country, everyone from Italian heritage, but also someone very um, understanding and forgiving and empathetic and someone very dogmatic and uh, strategizing and smart and quick, you know, like a different kind of like intelligence there. Mm -hmm. um, so at some point, even the times that they didn't support me, I would say that the struggle that they gave me to it was part of the learning Mm -hmm. Part of what made me this, like, gave me this energy, you know. At some point, I did have to, as everyone, as every teenager, I would say, we do have to fight of our course. parents yeah, for what yeah, we yeah, want, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, so, yet again, at some point, they did support me. They were like, hey, you know, full on, like, be you. And in other things, they were like, hey, you know, we, we don't agree. We're not going to support you there. And I had to explain them and educate them. And, and I would say that I, I'm really grateful that they were open enough, uh, both of them, to listen to what I needed to say. But I think that that also can be projected onto yeah. everyone, like this message of tolerance and understanding and learning, yeah. regardless of our age or our even our background or what we went through. You know, everyone has like this um, amazing thing they can teach you if, if you're eager to learn. <laughs> yeah. But, it, but I mean, I, w I wasn't assuming that everybody, everything was just very easy and bubbly all the time know, in your course. family life. But even to have this, this common ground of, okay, We can, even if your parents say that we don't understand it, but please explain. And I think I think the phrase "please explain" or "let's discuss this" is is way more than a lot of people are are getting. Exactly. Uh, some, a lot of times. Especially they supported you as well after yeah. you said you. They Explained, had the yeah. questions. Yeah. I mean, it was my mom that gave me this idea. So I moved out of my house when I was like 17, right? I went to the U.S. Yeah. for the first time mm -hmm. from Uruguay to the U.S. just like straight away. And it was actually my mom. She was like, one afternoon, she was like, what, what are you doing this summer? I was like, I'm probably going camping with my friends, you know, <laughs> something very simple and, and safe. And she was like, why don't you, I don't know, move countries? 
<laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, sure. are you trying to like kick me out? And she was like, no, no, no fucking way on the country. I, I'll pay for everything. But <laughs> do you want to have an international experience? I mean, it's about time, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 it literally took two weeks Amazing. to arrange the whole thing. Nice. And Greetings, just, mama. Yeah. I, I just spent like 25 days in the Aegean with her. She's so good. Um, moms. Beyond that, love mm. your mom. Yes, moms. moms. Shout out to all the moms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she was the one that planted that idea on me, right? She uh, yeah. she herself had lived abroad and she had seen the world and she had moved around and so she was like, "Hey, you know what? This is this, you need to see this." And um after that, everything went downhill in in a good way, you know? Like I came back to Uruguay and I couldn't I couldn't sell feet there. I moved to France then. <laughs> moved to France multiple cities like Nice and Paris and like and, like ch- chose what I wanted. Then when I was kind of like feeling safe and secure back in France, because I learned French there, like yeah. I went to four hours, four days a week yeah. for three months of full French lessons with someone wow. who didn't speak any other language than French. Okay, wow. Well, it was like, yes, You queen. have to learn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I did yeah. learn. Je parle français genre parfaitement, quoi. Oh, c'est ah. ah. des Français qui, qui, qui sont en train de regarder ça, dis-moi. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no clue what you said, but it sounded really nice. I said, nice. if there's any French people sick. watching this, uh, let me know. What do you think about uh, my nice. friends? Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, then <laughs> moved to Germany, to Berlin specifically. Mm-hmm. And then again, as I was feeling comfortable, uh, I moved to Sweden. Uh, in the peak of the pandemic, like when the pandemic was starting. And then so, not so long ago, I moved to Barcelona. Uh, but in the meantime, like in the past year, I lived three months in Uruguay because I want to see my family. Three months in Bari, in the Repub- in Italia. Um, in Bari, southern, southern uh, yeah, Italy, right? Yeah, side of Italy, like yeah, yeah. almost on the, on the, the boot, you know, like the heel of the yeah, boot, almost I, there. I, one fun side quest here. I, I played a show there okay. once. And it was the smallest show we've ever played in a long <laughs> while. There were 12 people. It was tw- Punk rock. Tw- in, in 2018, there were 12 people. Two in of them Bari. were in Bari, and Bari. two of them were moshing the okay. whole time. It was such a great show, but there's only <laughs> one row of people. It was 12. Well, people. Okay. It was so good. Yeah, intimate. You know, yeah, the looks, experience, VIP. Yeah, those, those 12 people. There are bands they had that the best take. Of their there chance. are bands that take a lot of money for those VIP. Right, they, exactly. They, were, they just pay the ticket. When they saw you in Eurovision, they were like, "What?" We- what? I was just in front of them, like, you know, <laughs> one year ago, I paid nothing. Back in body. Yeah, <laughs> you remember those body. times, yeah. They yeah, we went to Albero Bello, and then we went to see this band. Yeah, they're famous now. Yeah, that was that, yeah. <laughs> I have a picture with them. Uh, oh. I remember you eating. You covered in glitter. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you said you covered in, they were covered, were covered in glitter for a while, right? Yeah. He mentioned that earlier on, and he was like, Okay, that's an interesting fact to just say. Like, just, oh, no, yeah, I work covered in glitter. So what, what do you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> things in front of a camera and microphone. Right. <laughs> yeah. Audience. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> in front of an audience as well, mm-hmm. yeah. But right. yeah, Bari, great place. Bari. Amazing. <laughs> so I lived in Bari in Uruguay, in Stockholm and in Barcelona. Yeah. Three months, like a quarter each time. All of this way... Doing a highly, like a highly demanding job in the corporate world. I'm a, I'm a UX content manager for a company here in Barcelona, and I lead a, a team of people. And uh, I was doing all of this, like tra- just traveling different parts of the world while working remotely, while doing erotic modeling. I did, I did at least one photo shoot in each one of those places that I was. Nice. And you're right, I did a lot because I hadn't been there in a while, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, you're coming back!" Yeah, I like, yeah. Let's take advantage uh, of that. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. worked a lot there. It was amazing because it's it's a job as well, right? Like, oh like, yes, of course it is. <laughs> I, I mean, from know. what I can say and what I what I've seen so far, it looks. I mean, completely prof- It's completely professional. There's no other way to put it. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Are we adding like pictures of me here and like? Floating in the video. We're doing kind of a slideshow. I can do. This <laughs> is the slideshow. Like here, a picture of me. Oh, then, this is Frontry. Uh, yeah. Future me is going to hate it. <laughs> 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 but that's all right. Sorry, um. But wait, when you're telling about all those places you lived and you grew up and you, you switched places like all the time, do you miss the feeling of being home, fe- the feeling of being home somewhere? Or, you know what I mean? Like, home is just like calm down somewhere, for, uh, settle down for one year at least, or are you always, you have the kick of, you feel the, the kick of being on the road and see as much places as possible. Um, home is where your heart is. Oh, yeah. Mm. In it. 
I do feel like I feel like home when I'm around the people that I love. Okay. And uh, luckily, people are movable in a way. Mm -hmm. They can move around. Um, I have a desk in my house in which I put monthly the pictures of people that come see me. Mm -hmm. um, because I have a Polaroid camera, so I take an analog picture of them. and I That's put not creepy. There. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. Of us, right? Like of me and them. Yeah. So it's now it's like my mom, uh, one of my best friends, um, another friend that came to see me for two days. Uh, and, you know, so, and that, that moves around. And uh, my mm -hmm. pile of pictures is like this big. And this is only from Barcelona in the past months that I've been here. So Nice idea. I, I do think that, I, you know, I, I get this feeling of home when someone that I love mm -hmm. is here with me. That's a really nice and satisfying answer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> for a nomad, I mean... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, Wow. Where do you feel home? Hamburg? No. No. No, no not Hamburg, not Holland. Barcelona, not at <laughs> all. <laughs> not all. <laughs> yeah. No. I would I would say the same thing actually. Okay. Like um, people are movable and also you can you can make you feel home everywhere. You just need the right people and a ni nice um, like way of living and a nice mindset also. I hate that word. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. it before. I, say, I do not like the word, the word mindset. Mindset. <laughs> mindset. But you have to be good with yourself. I think that's a really important thing. And as soon as you feel comfy and good with yourself, um, I think I, I, maybe I, I couldn't move to Finland or somewhere. Just, like, I don't like the cold. That's a point. Yes, right. that's yeah. a point. I do love sun. I do love water. And nice people around me. Yeah. So basically, that's how I feel yeah. about home, being home. I think yes. what is also very important when you, when you're in some in a certain place, wherever it may be, because we're traveling a lot. Um, I've found that I'm pretty okay in any place as long as I can have um, my schedule in a way and mm -hmm. my way to go about things. Right. Um, then I'm completely fine, even with being in. Then that's not to talk shit about body, but that even <laughs> being okay in body where there's nothing else, and you're being stopped by the police when entering the city. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and Just the body. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I I think it's people that you like that have to be around you. You have to have a space for yourself, Absolutely. whatever whatever it may be. You have to do things for yourself. Um, or be able to do things for yourself, and um, then you're pretty okay, I think. Obviously, at one point, to have even a, a place, like a roof over your head, which is in one place. Yeah, really. But also space. Yeah. Like, place and space. Place, place and, and space. space, yeah. Like, yeah. not only a roof, not only a flat, yeah. but like also space for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to the, the possibility to think about things. Yeah, to exactly. have the time and the opportunity to think and yeah, maybe reflect adjust things also. True. I think that is um it's in line with what we were talking about um, on motivation and ambition and building kind of like the way uh, building things the way you wanna the way you the way you want your life to be, um, in a way and also projecting that mm -hmm. uh, to the outwards. Um I mean you said when you called me in that this is about inspiration, right? And I think that that's um, all of what we were talking about kind of like connects to that. Inspiration is about that ambition. It's about like rebuilding and reshaping uh, things to um, not specifically your advantage, right? But mm. more of like the benefit of everyone and you included in that benefit, you know, like you're thinking about like building things and projecting them to others and uh, inspiring yeah. is about that. It's not about um, it, the leader, it's about the followers because you can even follow no lead, uh, no leader, but yes, the lead, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's this um, old, I, I think it's in Sanskrit, the original, but I don't remember mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not one of the languages I speak. <laughs> Sanskrit. Uh, <laughs> Why not? But it's just like, uh, don't follow the path the master makes, uh, just walk his steps, or walks their, walk their steps. Huh. Which means, again, do not repeat exactly what everyone, exactly. or what everyone else is doing, but just more like, you know, walk on their steps and live it through yourself. And, and try, yeah. yourself. maybe you have to try to create the opportunity go, to go left and right on the way. Right. Wow. Maybe yeah. that's, so important. that's the thing, right? So important. So so important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to pivot and divert and diverge. Of course. When, there's, when you have a time of need. Yeah. And you that's sweat? what you, yeah, a lot. Okay. That's what you <laughs> said. That's what you said earlier with even a person being 35 and wanting to change careers. 
Um, it's like just if you have the opportunity. Right. To, oh, good. Roger is fighting with a fly right now. <laughs> yeah, for everybody who's not watching. Um, but please, you should. You should, you should watch. If there's one episode episode that should be watched, it's this one. Definitely. <laughs> it's because of Rodri. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. Connecting to that. Yeah. Um, Pio mentioned earlier, he asked me about like the erotic matter. He was like, hey, do you think we can talk, actually talk about this? And I was like, yeah, sure thing. Like there's uh, very difficult ways to get me offended. Coming from, I mean... You were mentioning erotic modeling and that you do it and that when you go back to Uruguay, you, you did it a lot. And while working a corporate job, um, doing both things at the same time, um, I want to know, first of all, um, how does one get into it? Um, mm. And also, when doing so, um, because there's... I mean, I don't have to guess that there's a stigma behind it because there clearly is. Whoever whoever does erotic modeling, doesn't matter the gender. Some people will say, uh -huh, that's uh, it's cheap or raunchy or whatever. As long as... I had the example beforehand with David Beckham. If it's not David Beckham posing in Calvin Klein underwear, um, it gets very, very stigmatized very quickly. So... Long question, but how do you how did did you get into it, and um, how did you f face the challenges with it um, and the stigma behind it? Yeah, I think there are like several topics we can we can mention on it, and uh, also mm -hmm. to give visibility, you know, on like um, sexism and mm -hmm. as well like Me Too movements that have like been popping around since the past years as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my first bachelor, so yeah, I work as a um, tech manager now, but. Um, my first bachelor was drama arts, right? Yeah. I went into drama arts because I started modeling when I was nine, maybe. I did my first Coca-Cola commercial when I was 13. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when you're 13, you don't really think much about what's happening. Uh, not even about how much you're getting paid. Yeah. So, like, you charge a bit, like, and then, like, your parents get the money, and then they're like, okay, you can buy this bunch of stuff, right? I remember when parents were like, do you want to get, like, I don't know, a professional camera? I was, like, yeah. 13. I had, pay, I had, like, done a few commercials, and I had, like, enough money to just, like... By our first reflex camera, right? Cool. Um, mm -hmm. On my, yet again, on my hard unconscious uh, work, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was, again, not doing it for the money. I was doing it because it was super fucking fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he went like, you know how things go with sexism. You start seeing how they treat girls and how they treat you and how things happen with, like, how people get selected and who actually oh, yeah. is running the runway and Selection. the things they That's tell you. Oh, and the things they tell you, like the mm -hmm. the way they treat kids, the way they treat you as a kid, you know, like they give you all this sort of like hor horrid comments about how you look and about how much worth, like how are you worth, right? Or what's your worth there? Like every, according to how you look. That's yeah. like, oh, yeah, when you you're could, a kid. You know, you right. could do Karina Herrera, but you could definitely not do Dior. Yeah. You'd be like, what do you think that to a kid? You'd be like, oh, you should be eating way less. To a 13-year-old, that's like this thin, right? Yeah. Um, it happens differently with boys, but it does happen in a way. Um... So yeah, I started modeling when I was very young. Yeah. And then at some point in my adolescence, I started taking pictures because I wanted to be in the in the background of it as well and kind of get see how things got done. Yeah. So I started learning uh, very much about photography when I was really young as well, right? Uh, through the industry of modeling. As I said before, I was running the runway and then doing yeah. the backstage, both as a as yeah. a paid job, you know, uh, in Uruguay. Uh, that was that was really cool several times. Uh, but yet again, eventually you start getting this um, kind of like proposals of like, okay, let's do something a little bit more like on this side, you know? And then you start hanging out with girls that are like, you know, again, 15, 16, and they, they can like look on pictures as if they were 20. Of course, yeah. and it's like really sexy and nice. And then the industry, um, it's not precisely separated from regular modeling, I would say. No one says it's kind of like with less clothes as long as you're wearing something. Yeah. Then nudity is another, another different thing, right? Um, but I think mm -hmm. that I myself quite sad that there's literally no nudity of me full on, like full frontals uh, on the internet, which is also a way of kind of like um, playing safe. Yeah. Uh, but I do like that limit um, or that kind of like that line, that fine line that divides both things, mostly because of, and I'm, I'm almost going to get political, sorry. 
um, Young and Latin, hashtag Latin American, everything. It's a political fight for me. Yeah. Uh, it's about freedom of expression, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not about nudity anymore. It's not about sex anymore. Uh, it's more about freedom of expression. It's more about like the, the beauty of shapes in, in a certain way. It's, it's like a renaissance thing. You know, it's yeah. like sculpting naked people. Mm -hmm. It's not about the sex of it. It's about a step. It's very true. All the sculptures, you see, they are all naked. And do people get offended by them? They definitely don't. Uh, no. <laughs> so I'm not comparing myself with a Greek god at all. <laughs> but <laughs> I do. Of you, because I have some pictures of a Greek fucking god. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's, um, it's about that. And Can I about, interrupt you? Yes, I, have a really, I have an interesting question. I, I'm interested in this. Yeah. Um, do, you have to, do you have struggles with the algorithm on Instagram Oof. due to nudity? Because shadow ban. Shadow ban and everything. Because, I mean, you're a man. And right. it's like, when, as soon as you um, show nipples as a woman or like a décolleté or anything... Oh, that's you get even, right. It doesn't even have to be nipples. It has, no, just has to be exactly, or only skin. the shape, like the, the shape the, of boobs, the shape of a of a woman. So, and I'm interested. Like, is it the same kind of shadow ban? And like the the, the at, I don't know. Not even ten percent of your following see seeing your posts due to nudity and like modeling naked. Uh. So, do you have that problem as well? I love it that we're talking sexism on Instagram now, yeah. or like sexism on, on the world of technology, because yet again, I'm like very close to both sides. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a content creator that does this stuff, but also I work in tech, so I build mm -hmm. technology for people, and I um, enhance their experience. That's literally my job, right? Like making yeah. people have a better experience, a better conversation um, with technology. But yet again, at the same time, I get shadow banned, but definitely not in the way that women get shadow banned, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, definitely not. Like, I've, I've been very, very, very close to full nudity, and as long as um, my um, penis is not showing, it's mm -hmm. super fine. Yeah, like, okay. And if you ask a man, as long as you're wearing a thong, it's okay. Mm. It's for your butt. I'm not even able to post, like, back pieces. Exactly, yeah. Because you're fully nude. Because the, my customers are fully nude, yes. <laughs> yes because even it's if I just, put some smileys on them. It's the just about the tattoos, but then you yes. show a full back piece. Getting their back tattooed and shadow ban. It's just a back. I got the message once in and a just week. A like you, your your account will be deleted soon. Yeah. Because oh, yes, yes. So of course. And I always artist. disagree, disagree, yeah, disagree. Always. Yeah, but Good. still, it's only a tattoo, you know. And if my customer wants it as a back piece, of course, and I want to show it to people, but no one can see it anymore because because of the, because of the shape of a woman with with back pieces on on men. I don't have that problem. Free the nipple. Of course. Yeah. Please. Hashtag free the nipple. Free the nipple. Like free the nipple. No they, they may up. express themselves. No like, <laughs> but, but I mean, um, didn't, I mean, of course we all know FKK, like Freiko, Open Kultur. And, oh, um, muy bien. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, but then in Spain, like everyone's topless all the time. Like, you know, there's yeah. like a lot of, but also in Colorado, I learned the other day, it's uh, illegal to be naked inside your house. Inside, inside your house? Yeah. You cannot be naked inside your house. Like if someone can see you, then you're attempting to them. Really? Correct me if I'm wrong, someone from Colorado. Uh, but uh, probably no one's from Colorado. So, yeah, I read it some the other day. Like, a That's Actually, sad. a friend told me like, oh, wow. through Instagram that uh, that had happened to him. Police <laughs> yeah. knocked on his front door. He was like, hey, your, your uh, neighbors complain you're naked. Uh, and at he was home. like, uh, yep, I am, yeah, exactly, I'm inside. And they were like, oh, but you need to close the curtains at least. They can see you, you're committing a felony. Okay. Okay. Wow. Read again, th 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 that's your question. That's your answer, I guess, on why can't you be naked on Instagram? Yes. And how mm -hmm. fucked up that is, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that um, that just the, the nudity fact and not precisely the the art fact gets like I don't know, on top of or mm -hmm. prioritized when when learning what to ban and what to not. Yeah. Have you learned anything? Like, you know that AI is exploding, right? Of course. Like, everything is AI now. It's, I yeah. think it's also it's only a filter which scans your post. It's not a person who reports your post, of course no, not. No, that takes much time. And I mean, money. and if there would be a person who reports my posts, yeah. get a life. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Please. Read a book. Please read a book. Yeah. Get a tattoo. Get a tattoo yeah. or something. <laughs> start a podcast. <laughs> Please don't start a podcast and talk about it. It's very annoying. If you're going to voice out your... your um, whatever you need, just like do it through the report page and that's it. It's anonymous. Yeah. Super weird. But also, we had that topic yesterday about like, not rude, but like sexual comments on Instagram. Sexual comments because of people. Um, I mean, they they see. 
they see too much skin for their liking, for mm -hmm. their liking, and they, assume um, they can sexualize you. Sexualize you. Um, Other people can sexualize you, of course, but if you do it by yourself, like for example, yeah, exactly. if I want to post, for example, a naked picture. Yeah. And was like, oh my God, she should tattoo and not show her tits or anything, yeah? And they judge you. Yeah. But if I'm only, if I'm wearing clothes and like, oh, look at her, maybe, uh, 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 you know? Other people can sexualize you, but as soon yeah. as you do it by yourself, you get judged as, as fuck. Exactly. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. That is if weird. If they're harassing you, that's okay. But if yeah. you actually expose yourself, then you're a whore. If you, take, you are a whore, yes. You exactly. may not take the power over yourself. Mm. <laughs> Jessica, exactly. with how many male tattoo artists have you slept with to be on the top now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Oh, my no, fucking God. God. Spoiler with no got, one. You probably <laughs> never got, like that, got asked that question, huh? What? Like that question, you know? Like what girls get asked? Because I never got it asked. No one ever asked me, oh... Did you actually, I, I got, I am successful in the corporate world, as I always mention, because I'm really proud, especially because of the fact that I studied drama arts, right? Yeah, Before yeah, I yeah. Actually, like, How does he, So okay. cool. Yeah. Um, but no one ever asked me if I actually had sex with someone to get to where to I get, am. Everyone to, assumes that I'm hardworking and smart. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I'm a man. But there are also <laughs> women who are hardworking and smart and still have boobs. Imagine. Right? Can yeah. you imagine that? Can you imagine, imagine. that? That's disgusting. Not using yeah. your vagina to get where you want to be? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're missing Man. out. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How are you going to get on top of everyone else? They are using their vaginas. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, you, you know, but I mean, no. sexism is like such a big thing. In As me. a man, you don't get these comments mm -hmm. at all. But you also get some comments on Instagram, like, I want to lick your face and stuff. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, face and other parts, but um, <laughs> that's yeah. also. And I'm not even naked on Instagram. It's just, I, I mean, of course there can be harassing comments in every way. Can be, and I, I get them. I'm sure you get them. Um, you I'm get not getting. No, I have a filter. Perfect. Mm -hmm. There's Perfect. a filter on Instagram. You put like I don't know. I have like cutie and Han and sexy and stuff. <laughs> so I don't even get those comments. Mm. Good. I live in my. But life. you see, there is Instagram's doing a good thing. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely people cross the line everywhere, um, but no one would ever question my success just because of the fact that I'm I'm trying to get laid by <laughs> people that can. Um, yeah, lift me up. Mm. Um, the corporate ladder or whatever, the, the career ladder. Yeah, the artist. Say. Yeah. Uh, ceiling, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like you, no one asks you if you get your tours because of your dick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No. Like, oh, you should have something. Oh, there. you got into Eurovision because of your dick. dick. How much did you huh? pay maybe, for that tour with maybe. Iron Maiden? <laughs> oh, we got, we, no, exactly. the tour with Iron, we got, there was a person that was very, very adamant about the fact that we definitely paid money to tour with Iron Maiden. Def he wouldn't believe anything else. Oh my God, really? And we were like, here's how it went. Um, they asked us, their booking agent called our booking agent. Yeah, but you know, I know how it goes. I know how the business goes. You you just put a lot of money onto the table. First of all, we're, we are a fairly successful band, <laughs> but being a fairly successful band and a growing band comes with growing costs right so we don't have the kind of money to put on the table to tour with one of the most famous heavy metal bands on earth we don't um they asked us but this person was like yeah i know how it goes and you paid money for it and he probably still believes it yeah but did he actually know anything about the showbiz or yeah oh okay. he, he, yeah which is even worse so i i'm assuming right now that he does his job very poorly. Yeah, or in that yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, maybe Greetings. Did. Or in that way. Or in that way, yeah. Wherever you are, thank you. Yeah. 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 He's really successful now. Oh, mm. come on. Yeah. And he didn't have to pay for it. Mm -mm. Or use his dig, which is <laughs> much more than what people would assume. Plot so twist. Be... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. There will be always people who will judge you for your yeah. penis or your hoops. <laughs> or your... No, no, really. Yeah, that's true. That's um, a really easy way to figure out things, you know? Like, oh, oh okay, well, she's successful because of this. Yeah. Not because she's hardworking. <laughs> yeah. But people are too That's concerned not, about yeah. what we do with our sexuality or with our bodies or with... Yeah. I mean, this is not only about fat phobia and body positivity. This is also about, like, being LGBTQ and or gender neutral or gen just gender divergent, you know, like, not systematic. Um, everyone is... Like the world is really, really concerned about what's hap 
what happens with your penis or vagina or whatever you... Whatever, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned it before, right? As well. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's an ongoing topic as, as it is forever. Um, you mentioned that when you were required, like, you needed to go out with a flag, right? In this parade, the flag parade after oh, your yeah. mission. Um, there were, this was I a whole this topic. Story. Yeah, it, this was a whole topic. At Eurovision on on site, this was a com- a huge topic in the press after Eurovision, especially because we came in last place. Um, obviously, and everybody knew all of a sudden that we came in last place. Everybody was like, "Yeah, I told you so." And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> um, um, you did." Um, and everybody hated us for not waving the German flag when walking into the final, but also not waving the German flag. And this was a whole discussion uh, on site. Uh, during a digital flag parade. Um, So for the BBC, we were required to do this flag-waving thing for TikTok, huge thing. Um, TikTok, official sponsor of Eurovision. Um, And we were like, no. TikTok is not paying for this right now. No, no. (laughs) Uh, Currently, we're not sponsored by TikTok. But if you guys want to... I mean... Update update your guidelines of what <laughs> what can be shown on TikTok and uh, freedom of speech in terms of tolerance. Um, and then, and we, can then we can talk. And then we can talk. Um, like that. Yeah, uh, it was a full discussion about the fact that we didn't want to wave the German flag, but we wanted to wave a pride flag because we feel felt like and feel like it's more important. And obviously, it gets seen by millions of people. Right. So, why not use the stage? Of course. Um, not only for us, but Please for... Please tell me then someone mentioned the gay lobby or something. No, 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 um, no, 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 okay. no one did that. I, I guess it was just it was just about the requirements that they had to proceed with everybody doing the same. I mean, when you you have to follow guidelines and you have people above you that are like, okay, why didn't they do this? You ha- you are in charge of that. And, um, and it, was, it was a full-on discussion for about 10 minutes why we don't do it. And we were like, no, it's just another thing. Waving a German flag as Germans seems mm. kind of weird to us. We don't feel comfortable with it. And I think um, when someone is not feeling comfortable with something, it's reason enough to not do it. I right? agree. Um, right? And we were like, no, we, we're not comfortable with it. And it went on for 10 minutes. Ultimately, we were able to wave a pride flag, which then again went on to... yeah. Which then again went on to cause a lot of discussion is a very <laughs> um, exaggerated term okay. uh, for it. It caused a lot of hate okay. speech. Oh, okay. Hate speech. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you did the right thing. 100%. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. You went for it. You went for it. Like, yeah. you all went for it. Yeah. And it's nobody really can important. take that away from us. I mean, right? hate speech is coming from one particular side. Uh, um, yeah, and, and then we, you win. And I mean, then, and then we went. It's just like, don't react to it. Just be like, go, go, shoot your shot. But really, yeah. I think it's about whatever. like killing them with kindness. You know, yeah. um, in terms of again showing the other cheek. I don't know however you want to call it. All religions have it. Everyone should like have it as a centerpiece in their lives. Yeah, um, understanding that digging violence is not the way. Is that yeah. is that your way to go about it? Because I I and. People should not assume, but I assume you, you've faced um, some kind of, yeah, for the lack of a better word, stupid comments on the work you do on Instagram. Oh, uh, I guess I'm accustomed to bullying. Um, yeah. As an LGBTQ person in society, yeah. especially like in in America, bullying is a thing, right? Like it does happen. Yeah. I, I'm kind of like accustomed to, get, to, to hate speech. Um, it's sad to say, but it's also true. Like it happens all the time. It has been happening forever. So yeah. at some point, I guess that also made me a bit like, meh, understanding okay. or a bit like understanding of, okay, you don't see it. Um, I told you earlier, like, hey, just speak freely because it's really difficult to offend me. Mm-hmm. And I think that getting falls in line with, with that, you know, like, hey, um, everyone has their point of view and that's completely fine. Yeah. I'm going to care about like what everyone has to say about my things. Uh, I mean, it made me suffer for the longest time, right? Yeah. I always tell my parents, I, I told my parents I was, um, I'm pansexual right now. And I've been kind of like coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out uh, my whole life. Like at first I came out as gay, then I came out as a bi, then as pansexual, then as polyamorous. Uh, so kind of like it's been a whole 
Yeah, I have three boyfriends now, and I have two boyfriends and a girlfriend. One, one of the boys is married, has two kids. I don't know, you know, things, different, um, <laughs> yeah. different things that, like, different ways. And it kind of yeah. like, feels like you're coming out all the time because everyone has a saying on it. Like, and you have to explain a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Which is you have exhausting. To give True. justifications on why do you act the way you act. Yeah, again, yeah. everyone's, like, really concerned about the fact that you're in a relationship, even if they have, like, literally no part of it, right? Like, you've never seen me with that person. You, I don't bring this person. You know, like, it's not related, but you still care a lot, so... Again, um, when I told my parents um, at age 14 uh, that I was gay, I yeah, kind of like I stopped suffering from it. Like I went from feeling bullied to feeling recognized in a, host- in a hostile way. Like, of course, like I was bullied in a hostile way, but it felt like recognition. It's like before I, before I knew and I was okay with it, yeah. it felt like harassment. It was like, oh, they're telling me I'm gay. Ah, so bad. It hurts me. You know, I don't want to be here. And then I was like, okay, wait. I am gay, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. They were right all the way. So then they were like, oh, you're so gay. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> yes. What? What? Sorry? Oh, it's wrong? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the way I am. I mean, I don't yeah. know if it's wrong, but it is what it is. Yeah. They were like, I remember one boy that was like, oh, I'm going to punch you in the face next time you say yes. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, yeah, because... Uh, and I, 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 then I think I understood. Like I was like, okay, so it's about like making me feel sad. It's not precisely about being gay, even you know. Yeah. It's not the fact that I'm gay. It's the fact that it made me like they just everyone found a way to yeah. harass me, right? But yet again, I think that really helped me later onwards, and it helps me right now when I understand when people come at me with a certain judgy opinion. I'm like, you know what? Again, there's enough room for all of us. You can have your horrible like. You, you want to think about that? You want to go to bed thinking that I am naked on your feed instead of unfollowing me. <laughs> <laughs> you go do that, you know. You go I mean, do that, like you, you just like pray to whatever God you know about. Uh, yeah, this boy that is naked on my Instagram. You know, I want him to just like be happy. Finally, understand. You go do that, you know. Um, I think that at at some point, every thought, even negative thoughts, if you're like able to transmutate them, they flow into positive energy towards you. <laughs> Someone's yeah. thinking of you. Thank you for that. <laughs> 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 even if you hate it. Like, That's such. <laughs> it is. It is a very powerful way to go about things. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm sure, as it's, you said, it took it, it took a lot of strength to go there, and a lot of time, and a lot of suffering. But also, <laughs> it's so inspi- It's so inspiring. <laughs> yeah. It's really inspiring. Yeah. It's really inspiring because. Um, Are you I'm, crying? Because uh, of that nice speech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I. I mean, it's worth. <sighs> The tears. Uh, <laughs> well, this is sweat. <laughs> Sorry. The water is really Watch wet. it on YouTube. <laughs> yes, yeah, watch it on YouTube. Um, we're sweating all it's over. It's really, it's actually really sexy anyway, right? Yeah. I yeah, think so. so. Yeah. 38 degrees. My fucked up voice from yesterday because I went on a roller coaster. Yeah. That's why I have that sense. voice. Mm-hmm. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, guys. Really, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Um... No, I'm I'm asking this also because I think this is worth watching um, for for everyone, but also especially for people that I sometimes meet at our shows um, because there is quite a few people from the LGBTQ community coming to our shows, and they're in different states of their of their journey, and they're somewhere where they're still very insecure with themselves and don't know what to do. Of um, there are people who are as fine with everything as you, um, <laughs> which is, which is, um, achieve, what's the word worth achieving. Um, okay. and I hope, and I hope everybody achieves that at one point. Um, but I think this is very important advice for people that, um, aren't there yet, that it takes a lot of suffering and time and ultimately acceptance of yourself most, and accepting most. acceptance of people that are just hateful towards you and be like, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I just hateful towards you and that's okay, but it doesn't have to do anything with you. It has right. to do everything with them. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I mean, yeah. you couldn't have, you couldn't have said it in a better way. <sighs> mm, yes. Yeah. See, I came prepared. <laughs> Poetic pool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, like, at some point I do agree that we think that, okay, you know, everything is like, okay, with LGBTQ people around the world, and um, and that it has to do a bit, it's it kind of like an artifice of companies and stuff, because things are actually not okay, and conflict is happening all over, and blah, 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 blah. so indeed, it's like about personal power at some point. 
Yeah. So like you, it's about not waiting until your your society specifically wants to helps you go through something smoothly. It's more about yeah. like empowering yourself and just going yeah. through it. Because you could wait forever for that. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go up and down like all the time. You know, like today you have rights, tomorrow you don't. Um, just keep recognizing yeah. yourself and and fighting for what you think it's true and and worthy. Yeah. Where there I, I, there's definitely people out there to support you all the time. Just seek out to them. Um, we mentioned earlier. True. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Wise words. Mm, indeed. Mm. Wise words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Do you, you think it's that. the espresso martini? No. Oh, it's espresso good. Martini. <laughs> Is it? Maybe, I don't know. Could be. Could be. Okay. <sighs> I'm <So>. really hot. <laughs> in terms of <laughs> temperature. <laughs> in terms of temperature. <laughs> should, we, should we pause? Refill our espresso martinis. Yeah. Wear an extra accessory and continue recording. A that bit. was would be okay. Uh, come on, pause. 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 <laughs> this is Rodri. Yes. Hello. <laughs> we're back. We're very good. We're <laughs> had some like some changes. Just yeah. a few outfit changes, right? Outfit like, changes. Out- Tempr- Plus, temperature changes. Temperature changes. Also <laughs> sun protection. Espresso. Yes. For a German um, potato. <laughs> German potato. And also, also another round of espresso martinis. Mm. <clears throat> espresso martini. Mm. Espresso martini. <laughs> sí. Sí. <laughs> sí. 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 That's how Spanish you speak, right? Sí. ¿Hablamos sí. español? ¿Hablamos un poco? español? Un, un poquito? poquito, sí, muy bien. Pero tú hablas español. Sí. Yo hablo español, pero solo un poquito. Muy bien. Muy bien. Gracias. La pronunciación Gracias. es sí. muy rápido, sí. eh, elocuente. Nah, que elocuente. <laughs> ah, eh, pero, eh, yo yo porque, he aprend- eh, aprendido español en, en la escuela. Mm. Bien, o sea, esta gente Por muy tres años. Por tres años. Por tres años. Uh, me encanta. Me encanta. Yo he hecho mi bachillerato, bachillerato en español. ¿En, en serio? Sí. ¿Bachillerato en español? Sí, mi, mi bachillerato oral. Uh, bachillerato oral. <laughs> I don't know if that's the term for it. Yes, I guess it is. It be. Este chico joven y moreno es uh, Rodrigo, es andaluz de Córdoba, estudiante de informática, hoy es su cumpleaños. ¡Ay! Hoy no, es su cumpleaños. Hoy Happy es birthday. su cumpleaños. Happy birthday to you. Cumpleaños. Feliz. feliz. You know how is it in Swedish? They have their own thing. It's yo mojaleva, yo mojaleva, yo mojaleva, juti hundra de ur. Yabisco jaleva, yabisco jaleva, yabisco jaleva, juti hundra de ur. And everyone yeah. says, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. <laughs> hurrah. That's so interesting, I guess, for me. But I'm a language nerd. Like, um, what about the, that the team I I direct or lead or inspire, whatever, uh, I never know how to say it in a way that it's not like, a bra- sounds like bragging, because I, I don't know, they inspire me every day. It's more like, they You're just inspire me to tell yeah. them what to do. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> these people, they are all nice. from different countries. Like everyone is a specialist from a different country, right? A UX mm-hmm. specialist from a different country because they own, own, own a different market. And um, we have one-on-one sessions in which we try to speak their language. Mm-hmm. So like I speak Italian with one of them, French with the other one, uh, Portuguese with one of them, Spanish Portuguese with one of them. as well? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It sounds so... A bit of Russian, I think. No, but no? Portuguese to Brazil yeah? sounds different. All sounds right. Like very, okay. like, All yeah, right. So All right. Yeah. So also well, the, the thing, I think it's audible when you when you play with the mic stand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I think. Do you think the par- the the skill to to speak a lot of different languages really well gives you a lot of opportunity in your work work life? Of course, right? Oof, I think it has definitely gave me uh, all this. Um, what I talked about that I kind of like moved to different countries, mm. uh, performing jobs, and I guess one of the main skills that I had was that I, I was able to speak different languages. So I was able to lead people from different backgrounds and that spoke different languages as natives um, in a smooth way. Okay, and I, also understand the way of working. I think, like, I would be curious about the... Um, how do you feel... The, do you feel a difference between the work habits of German people and people in Spain, for example. And I'm not talking about the siesta. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a tra- I, so I, let's talk about the past five years, right? And when I lived in, in Stockholm and worked for a, a Swedish company, and then uh, the past years before that, that I worked in Germany for German companies all the time mm-hmm. as well. The companies that were actually funded in Germany uh, with, with German people, you know, um, 100%. In uh, how to, I had to actually adequate each time or learn each time very quickly how to develop uh, smoothly in, in, 
in those places, right? Especially as someone from Uruguay. Again, it's, I'm from freaking Uruguay. You know, I'm not even from like a country that people know anything mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. So they cannot, there's true. not even a true stigma on being Uruguayan because people is like, mm? what is it? Yeah, yeah. they're like, <laughs> yeah, you, true. But you, once in Sweden, I got a lot of the, oh, you don't look Uruguayan. <sighs> so it's like, what do you, uh, do you know other Uruguayans? And yeah. I able to know. I was like, okay, so how do you even know how your yeah. lion looks? Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know. I just, just assume, I you know, for an African, for a Northern African. I was like, <laughs> and Northern, Northern African. African. No, it's fucking in South America. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, no, okay. okay. You sh- if you don't know anything about Uruguay, you should know that it's in South America. In South America. Fucking hell. Yeah. The capital is Montevideo? That's right. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, 1.5 million people, uh, the capital. And then there's 3 million people in Uruguay. And there's 3.6 million nationalized as Uruguayan. Um, just very, very small. You can drive yeah. it on this side in four hours and this side in six hours. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, so it's very, very small. Um, and yet again, it's not like... That was that was a blessing, right? Because it didn't allow people to say, oh, okay, you're this, you're that, right? Because mm-hmm. no one knew what I was. So it was like, okay, that's okay. You are you can be this. Like, I was called to lead the Italian and, and Spanish uh, expansion of this Swedish company. And I was like, I was neither, stand, neither Spanish nor Italian. I was just like... I. Sp- speak Spanish and uh, I lived in Spain and uh, I have come from Italian heritage but uh, again it's more about the communication right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sp- spoke fluently those languages because my my whole growing up I was speaking those and um, so yeah it did open lots of lots of possibilities for me in the profession yeah. world it also took a lot of work um, they said I went to four hours four days a week for three months of French lessons to actually learn the language yeah. and then I was hired by this German company to actually be in the French market leading because I was able to speak English and French fluently whereas no one else in the team could. And then yeah. the, everyone else spoke German so they had to learn German. Mm-hmm. I also put in the work uh, to actually learn German with them. German is so, uh, actually such a difficult language to learn. The it grammar, is it is beautiful. You think I it's beautiful, it. really? Yeah, I don't know. I love it. Okay, that yeah. never heard that before to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just imagine like for example ambulance. Ambulance, yeah. In French, it's Ambulance. Ambulance. Mm-hmm. Um, Ambulance. And in German, it's Krankenwagen. Yeah. Krankenwagen. Come on. Like Krankenkasse. Or. Yeah, Krankenkasse. <laughs> we love <laughs> greetings. We love the Krankenkasse. Yeah. We oh. Do. Mm-hmm. So Take my get, money. Fuckers. <laughs> um, <in Sweden, laughs> <laughs> if you work past 3 p.m., it's kind of like, what are you doing? Like you, should, you should go home. Uh-huh. You, know, you should go home. Past 3 p.m.? Yeah, you should go home. Like, enjoy life. Uh, it's dark half of the time, so True. it's already the night. At 3 p.m., it's like it feels like it's uh, 10 p.m. Yeah. So you go home, eat pad thai, go to bed. Um, but you, of course, you gotta go to the gym, eat healthy, and be all like all this Scandinavian way yeah. of living, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, so work life balance, right? Now, really so yeah, that, <laughs> that's a really interesting topic. We discussed it the last episode. I think, mm. is it out already? Not sure. When this is out, yeah. When this is out, yeah. If it's out, the link yeah. is in the description yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Hopefully. So um, a work-life balance for me does not exist. I think it's an old-fashioned thing okay. to handle your life like 50-50. It's not possible for me, I don't think. Even, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're self-employed or not. I think it should be like, what What did I say? It should be like 30-30-30. You it said 30-30-30. Yeah, it yeah. should be like work, like the work, then the, the responsibilities you have in your life, for example, like... House housekeeping, yeah. um, relationships, and, and also go to the gym, be healthy, I don't yeah. know, things. And then the other 30% is like taking care of your beloved ones because this is also work, kind oh, of, cool. yeah? So It takes time. It takes time and Everything effort. Everything takes time should be kind of like in balance. Yes, so uh, I think it's really, ins- it's, it's really inspiring how you handle the typical work-life balance thing because I... Do not know a lot of people like you who are like you are. You do enjoy life. You are Dolce Vita, <laughs> Rodri. You are. So please tell us and our listeners and our um, subscribers the secret, please, because I think from a distance you have a really nice balanced way of life. Thank you. I mean, I guess you know me enough. Like yeah. you know, we've known each other enough to to actually see that. And it's a question that I get a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I often I get asked on Instagram like. Do you even work? Uh, like, do you even have a job? <laughs> do you even work? And I'm like, whoa, yeah, I have actually multiple sources of income and multiple jobs. And I kind of like, I get inspired by everything. And I, I'm curious on a multiple, like, um, 
there are multiple levels of and spheres, right? And I think that I think if I'm allowed to say one of yeah. that's one of the inspiring things um, I would put on myself. You know, I, I when you said inspiring, I was like, what am I inspiring about it? And I think that that's like like the thing that I could easily um, advocate for. You know, this idea again that it takes courage to actually um, fulfill whatever one calls success or balance, and that it takes like a lot of boundary putting, right? Boundary on, putting on oneself, on others. Um, it requires a lot of support. Mm-hmm. Like it's not possible to do it alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. definitely True. not like you need, uh, in a way, support not only from your government and your labor law, uh, most definitely, but also from your beloved ones, right? As you mm-hmm. said, like taking care of people, it's a, it's a huge. Uh, it takes time. You know, takes to time. do it well and wholeheartedly it takes time, right? But again, I think that what I have seen the most, or my friends have asked me the most, is like, how do you actually get? courage yet again to just move from thing to thing mm-hmm. like I, I was modeling then I was a photographer I moved to Europe because I got like this huge offer done by uh, this woman in, in Champagne uh, that allowed me to move careers like into yeah. more like photography wise and then I got uh, called upon for another job and then I went into technology and then I moved around and my friends were like but how, how the fuck you know like you did a bachelor in, in drama arts and like you did Shakespeare and opera I did opera I did four operas you guys <laughs> yeah. like, I, operas like lyrical operas you know like in in the national theater of my country yeah um and i did shakespeare in the, the only english speaking um company in my country like it was a huge success could you please tell our listeners about the about the movie the german one um, yes please <laughs> robbery has been in a movie mm. yeah, yeah yeah i've been in several like um short movies but i've been in a full length like movie like yeah. a one hour and six minute movie it's considered a movie you guys yeah uh, called schlagaffenland um schlagaffenland. Schlagaffenland. that's a that's a word mix between rough and uh schlagerland right schlagaffenland That's no. what they said. No, what, what's the name of the movie? Schlaraffenland. Schlaraffenland. Yeah, how is it spelled? Like it's Schla- Schla- Ruff? It's like a Schlaraffenland. And yes, yeah, Schla- Schla- Schlaraffenland. Oh, yeah. so it's it's not Schlaraffenland. Because the usual yeah, term Schlaraffenland is... It also sounds like this other term you're thinking about, right? Ah, That's a whole mix. it has another meaning. It has another meaning than just Schlaraffenland. Because in Schlaraffenland, um, it's... Um, Like a fairy it's table, it's a fairy. Da- it's a paradise where where you have everything. You have rivers yeah. flowing of honey and yeah, 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 yeah. sugar water. trees. So it's that yeah. it is that's Schlagaffenland, and it's also it's written as Schlaraff, as in uh, rough. Rough. Schlaraff. Now I got. So oh, there's the whole word mix. It's very good. Uh, that's it, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Schlaraffenland. Um, okay. Quick story on how did I get that role? I had just moved to Berlin. As uh, <laughs> it was my second day in this company. I'm not going to mention it because. Yeah, they were not good. But uh, <laughs> I was working in that company. I was speaking four languages for them, just like doing things in technology and payments with them, uh, just because I spoke four languages. It was like my thing. I could read all the invoices. So yeah. I didn't actually need a team. They could use me. Fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fun. I took it, of course. So yeah. I was in my break. I was in this, um, and I met this person. I was sitting next to some dude. Yeah. He was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was like, so random. Um, hey. I was like, Is the Deutsch? He was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't really speak more than that, but like, let's speak. We started talking. It, he was an actor as well. I was like, oh, okay, I studied acting. I was an actor like not so long ago. And he was like, oh, really? Are you looking for a job? And I was like, okay, yes, I'm, I could be actually looking for a job. So he called the director of this movie, right? Like right there, like he FaceTimed the dude. He was like, hey, I'm with an actor here. Do you want to cast it? And I was like... And he was like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I just grabbed the phone and he was like, Do you speak German? I was like, I, I speak a bit of German. He was like, Can you pretend? I was like, Yeah, of course I can pretend. I'm an actor. And he was like, Pretend. I was like, Perfect. It's a, it's a very common acting um, thing you do. In, I did in my first like a week at acting, my f- the first time I did acting professionally or like yeah. uh, uh, that I learned acting for as a job. Uh, there's like pretending you have an accent or do you come from a specific place and you create a language, right? So I was like, yeah, Stuchenbach in seven strudel. And he was like, okay, yeah, perfect. You you could sound German any day. And I was like, yeah, sure, perfect. So he was like, you can learn the lines. And I was like, you can learn literally any sounds um, yeah. you put in front of me. It doesn't have to actually make sense. Yeah. Like, it makes sense in different ways for actors. Strudel. Right? Yeah, you don't really think, you think with your body in a way. At least you're not definitely. a good actor. Yeah. So it's about the action and the... 
Oh, no. I'm expression in your yeah, face yeah, yeah, yeah. also like I'm angry yeah, I'm yeah. German it's only about work bitch yeah, so yeah. my character was this escort that was Romanian but pretending to be German yeah so I said things like oh one stund if you can try and egal I mean I'm a good kid you know nice like very simple nice. like yeah, yeah. Um, I had a word Henkel Spritzer It was like, are you really, you really want me to say that? And he was like, yeah, you say at the end and look at the camera and like, you know, a bit beyond of it. Anyway, did you need to close it? And uh, it was so cool. I was like, yes, nice. this is a fucking dream. That was, it was, um, I was paid for rehearsal hours. So we were oh, paid nice. for rehearsal minutes. Nice. That was so crazy. It was, it was so good. Well, uh, Yeah, I was acting and also working in technology. We did that movie. Uh, then I went full on technology. Um, And everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Why are you like, full on in one thing? I remember my mom, that she's a therapist. She was like, why? Like, you need to be able to sustain things. Yeah. I was like, hey, the fire that ignites me has to do with going a bit beyond the, the things that one would pursue as safe and easy yeah. to do. You know, like part of it is like being there, learning about new things and not knowing what's going to happen yeah. with it. Yeah. And, uh, and hey, this is like a, a recipe for success. You know, you don't have to really be good at it. You just have to like Pretend. be there. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. be there. You know, like do your thing and learn and just yeah. look closely at others that do it well and like it's there. Yeah, you know? and it's probably completely okay to not be comfortable with it at first at least. 100%. Yeah, because um, there's always what I find and also found, it's really, really good to be thrown into ice cold water and be like, I don't have any idea how to do this, but I have to now, and I will try my best to do so. Um, but one question to you both guys. Do you yeah. have, like, an advice for people who have have not the strength of, like, stepping into cold water? Because some people are more, like, anxious and not, like, oh, this is cold water, I want to jump in right away. Yeah. So do you have advices for people, for our listeners, who are more, like, kind of shy to try out new things or how did you yeah. do that I, I it wasn't advice, it was it was never myself that put myself into those positions okay, okay. i was pushed mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. and and that you could say it's bad luck or it's luck uh, depending on how you look at it But I've never was I never was the person to to jump into it I yeah but you pushed. still stayed in the cold water yeah so why um why yes or no not why how i have a strong sense of um what's it called Verantwortung. responsibility responsibility okay. thank you uh, and if i'm being made responsible for a certain thing even though i feel bad doing it i would feel worse Not doing it. Or stopping it. Or stopping it. Somewhere else. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so. As soon I as will, you. Sorry. I will. Um, for example, I was. When I was studying audio engineering, I knew shit about anything. I was put in the position of stage managing and doing monitors, like in your monitors for the artists playing there. Okay. I had no idea <laughs> how to do this. It was an official thing for three days um, with. Some huge German artists, some small, some some bigger, um, and I was put in the position of doing it for Viva Conagua, for the the charity organization. For okay. I was like, fuck, I don't know anything, but it would be worse if I didn't do it because I'm responsible for it. Right. <laughs> and I probably didn't do as good as it should have been, but it worked. But and still, you learned. And I was going to say exactly that. I learned, I learned a lot, and after that, I I don't remember a lot because I was completely just in focus Shot mode, and, and I was yeah. just trying to put out fires for three days mm -hmm. on end for eighteen hour work days. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Do you have an advice for people? I think I have a piece of advice. Yes. Um, I'm gonna look at the camera while saying it. I think it. Um, my advice is that focus on the fact that it's not about the outcome. It is definitely about the path. Um, you know what I mean? Like definitely, I do. Yeah, it, I, is. it is. This is my my last ten years. I think. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. Though. To be honest, yeah. 
Yeah. Ain't that the key to happiness? I'm reading this book, uh, The Happiness Hypothesis, highly recommended. It's um, a take on, on someone that did an investigation and resourced 10 big thinkers throughout history around yeah. his own time that said the same things in different ways. From Jesus, from Jesus to Mahatma Gandhi, they said the same thing like in different ways, in different parts of the world, in different, and he kind of like conclaves all the keys for that thing in a definitely like... That's one of them. It's not about the outcome. Mm -hmm. Because the outcome is so variable and yeah. so much, like, so related in most cases with what others would appraise or not. Plus, it's, it. yeah, plus also it's about um, interpretation. 100%. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I mean, most of the times, like, the only one that knows exactly where you come from and where you're at, it's you. Like, oh. even if you explain it thoroughly to someone... They would, like, you would only know, you know, how much you actually went through. So I'm proud of you, you know, for everything you went through and everything we all went through and, like, the way we are today, you know. Like, sometimes it can sound, when you talk about success, it sounds entitled or uh, it sounds like, oh, okay, you had it, like, easy. And it's like, hey, you know, like, again, we all come from, like, a different place that we would never cease to explain if we had the opportunity and we only know how proud we should be on ourselves. Plus, you know? success is only a little part of the whole... Yeah, the smallest. the smallest. The smallest, yes. Definitely the smallest. And why do people always relate on those like, oh, how much do you charge per hour? Oh, how much did the, the tour with Iron Maiden cost? You know? Oh, uh, God, yeah. Right, yeah how much followers um, do you have? How much did you pay for your followers? Right. You know? I mean, yeah. 2,000 euro. No. <laughs> Where did you get them? Okay. That's, that's cheap. That's cheap. You're buying followers then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. No, yeah, but 100%, like, um, let's talk about if, like, capitalism is the base of it all, right? Yeah. Um, we talk about sexism today, we talk about success, we talk about heritage, we talk about a bunch of stuff, and, like, the base of it all is capitalism, right? Saying your worth, like, capitalized and yeah. created into money. And mm -hmm. um, most of the things that are, aren't cool with society or weren't cool in a way, it's because, like, they were not profitable. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Politically or in a status way or like, you know, the most popular things that came along. Of course, it's also mass manipulation. But like we talk about marketing a lot um, with my friends in general, like in social media marketing and mm -hmm. like how like how actually like it, the way you say things converts um, the thinking of people around you. Um, yeah. That's true. And all that. What about like... Um, Where's my martini? Uh, it's right <laughs> behind you. Okay. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry. So, um, one question, because you're obviously you're an erotic model on Instagram, and you um, you you can see that you really do love what you are doing. Yeah. Do. So, how do you handle your private relationships on Instagram, for example? Like, do you think it affects your followers if you say, "Okay, hello, I am in a healthy and happy relationship," for example? Do you think people who are following you because of your content? Like and they want to see you your nice pictures. Do you think it's it affects your success? Pardon me, but like you know what I mean, like yeah, yeah. your success on Instagram. I know what you mean. That um, you are just giving personal information to people, or is it a good thing? Because for me, if I give a lot of like personal, people love to see my personal side on Instagram because yeah, it's like, of course, she's not only a machine doing tattoos. I'm a human being and I go have a breakfast and I do cry and I do human, really, really human, boring things as well. Of course, of course. So how is that with modeling on Instagram? So I think um, to research something you just said, it's like, it's about the points of encounter, right? It's about the points of contact of humanity as like, as um, as a communal sentient being right like this idea of relating and understanding that even if we have all different interests we share uh, a bunch of stuff that make us the mm -hmm. same thing like and that's why we should like help each other to like pursue whatever makes us different yeah there you go. Mm. the things that make us the same are never gonna go away yeah. right we're all gonna cry we're all gonna have to eat we're all gonna have to sleep at some point mm -hmm. so hey Let's embrace that and also like be fine with the things that don't make us um, in the same way, right? True, yeah. true. So I think that's the way I fight it again. Like that's the way I handle it. That's the way I repeat to people. And I think that a lot of people get really frustrated when I say that. And again, that they're like, oh no, but what the heck? Like, aren't you scared? I'm like, no. <laughs> that's not real. Like, you're just faking it. And I'm like, I swear I'm not. Like, I 
Well, I mean, oh, it, and even if I'm like super scared and when I'm scared, I'm like, yeah, I'm scared of shit. Like, yeah, of course. And at some point I was like, I remember the first time um, I was asked or wait, 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 no, let's tell a better story. I remember the first time that um, someone went on on me, like a photographer went on on me. Mm -hmm. I was like, like posing in my underwear with a sun, like projected uh, in two different projectors on me. It was so great. The shooting was so good. It went, it went so bad that we never outed it. Like we never did because his lawyer called my lawyer. Uh, because I was like, hey, this, this is going to happen. It was here in Barcelona. I'm never going to tell your name, you asshole. But hey, for everyone <laughs> there that God ever yeah. um, uh, assaulted, semi-assaulted or abused while working uh, in any industry. Yeah, you can keep it private and still fight for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but because I was this close to actually um, say it out loud. You know, I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to denounce you on Instagram. Like, I'm going to say it out loud. Yeah, he has like, thing is, I went in and... Um, He went on on me, like, after, like, oh, an hour of shooting, and I was like, well, I'll stop, like, what the heck is going on? And he, like, everything was closed, and he was like, we were on the only people there. And I remember Shit. thinking, why am I, like, the only... I was like, hey, where are your assistants? You said so someone doing makeup. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he couldn't come. And I was like, okay, and you have no shooting assistant? Like, you're going to do all the lighting yourself? He was like, yeah. And I was like, he was paying for it, right? So he was like, okay, this is weird. Uh, I remember I thought, okay, that's okay. Um... Thing is, it went it went bad. He prepared like he he yeah, he did not like not be good things. I went out, like nothing happened. I was like, oh, okay, what the fuck's going on? Like I got a bit violent. He got a bit violent. He didn't rape me, uh, but he did <laughs> he did assault me, right? And I went out and yeah. like I was went out like crying. But I remember uh, telling my mom, like, hey, you know what this brought me? And she was like, ah, once I can love you, mom. Uh, she was like, yo, uh, that could have happened like at any point in any place. And like this is how. Like so how violent society is, and definitely you should protect yourself. Yeah. Um. So just like understand that it's mostly about seeking for help, right? Mm -hmm. It's about saying, "Hey, uh, I started going with people to photo shoots, right? I went yeah. to tons of other photo shoots. Like, uh, true. I started going with friends. Yeah. So hey, yeah. I'm gonna bring my boyfriend. I'm gonna bring my friend. I'm gonna bring someone that will take care of me. And mm -hmm. if someone said no, I was like, okay, then I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you true. want me? Like money is not enough. I need to bring someone. And they were like, okay, sure. Uh, the people that said yes was very professional. People that of course two times someone Always. said no. I was like, yep, I'm going. And mm -hmm. it was okay. You know? So I think, uh, yeah, that it's an industry that um, gets people young and like, kind of like makes, if it makes you feel unsafe, unsafe and insecure, I think with tattooing it's the same. Like, don't you get approached by people that's like, oh, tattoo my, like, I don't know, like a very intimate part of my body. Like, like have you ever had that as a, as a woman that tattoos and that's very beautiful? Uh, people are approaching you just because you're hot and not precisely because they want a tattoo, but like using tattooing as an excuse to. I meet. do not know because I'm always have my asshole radar. <laughs> I always say this because if, as soon as someone's um, texting me, I know if they're serious about the tattoo or not. And okay, so you have a filter. I, ha I think I have a filter. I'm super happy and I'm a lucky person that I never had the experience. No one ever uh, asked you out after a tattoo? Like, hey. Like, do you mean afterwards for, for like a drink or something? Yeah. Yes, but then I'm professional because you're here for a tattoo. Come on. So, no. I'm the, This is, like you said before, it's about boundaries. Yeah. And that's where I set my boundary. Like, of course, we can have a drink together afterwards, because, but because you are my client and we have a really intimate relationship together, yes? And we... I'm changing your body for the rest of yeah. your life. So, of course, let's have a few drinks together and, and enjoy our evening. But not in a, in a, in a sexual, re erotic or dating kind of thing. Not at all. Never. Because I'm really happy that all my clients are really respectful. So am I. So. Well done. Yes. Yep. Yes. Well, okay. I get a lot of, like, nasty proposals. <laughs> yeah, and that's the good thing about yeah. the Instagram filter. I never have like nasty messages or anything like, hey, like, like there, I, yeah. I did w once receive the dick pic of a client. And he's not my client anymore. Of course not. Obviously. What the fuck are you thinking? Come on. What the fuck? I, I, I think there's no woman or like not a man existing who like receives the dick pic. It's like, oh, yes, please, let's go out. I always say, and some dick pics are not okay. No, like, it's no. Been unsolicited. It's like if we're not sexting, please do not like. Yeah, do not have my coffee with your dick. Yeah, like no one asked for it's it. It's super weird. <laughs> But yeah. I always say like, um, 
there they was reading, and this is interesting to mention, about attachment theory. Mm-hmm. Have you read about it? Mm-mm. No. Hmm. Attachment theory says, um, it's pretty good. It says that like, there's just three types of attachments, right? Like uh, secure, uh, anxious, and avoidant. Or you can actually be uh, anxious and avoidant at the same time. And you can also actually be like secure and in a certain way, anxious or avoidant in, in a way, right? In the way you're attached to people. Uh, it says that it was like, it's built within uh, the first year of, of your life. Like it, okay. it's how you understand how your parents um, behave towards you, mm. right? Mm-hmm. It can yep. be tested back then, but it can be tested in the future, right? And this uh, archetypes of behavior can like shape the way you will build relationships. Um, yeah. Once again, because it's what feels familiar and what the only thing you can you can do, right? Um, then if we add to like this gestalt principle of psychology that says that the only ways are to repeat or to repair, we understand a bit more about how we develop as humans. Um, but so yet again, attachment theory. If you got the time, read about it. Um, yes. It's called um, Maneras de Mar in Spanish, Ways of Loving um, or Attachment Ways uh, in English. Um, it's very good. Yeah. Okay. It's like a 10 Thank year you. Amazon Recommendation purchase. to everyone watching and also to us. And now that you're mentioning it, I think my therapist, uh, we, we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about it's, it. It's yes. It's really cool yeah. to know about. We did. Okay. All right. Perfect. I think <laughs> it's very warm in here. I'd love to go on for hours. Um, we can do it off camera. We can do it off camera. Yeah. Let's that's do. It, let's do it off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I will stay here for the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, Perfect. I'm loving it. This was like so good. You yes, guys. that was um, really nice conversation. Mm. Really nice as Presa Martinez. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you also for so much advices and so much ins- <laughs> ins- inspiration. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. really, it was a really nice. I don't know, two hours. I don't have a feeling for time anymore. Doesn't matter. But Same. but still, thank you so much. I had a blast in this jacuzzi with you both. It was really a really nice afternoon, Sunday yeah. afternoon. And yes, um, so we have two playlists okay. for Gina's room. Yes. So we have Gina, Gina's Doom and Gina's Gloom. And as you mentioned before, you are not into a lot of heavy music. Uh, no, you are? I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into heavy music, but I'm more into, in this case, for this scenario, in the for what the topics we mentioned as well, into Gina's. Gloom. Gloom, yeah. Gloom or? Gloom. Gloom. Yeah. Gloom. Gloom. Gina's gloom. So, um, please give us a song you really like. You want to put on the playlist. You want to put on a playlist. Ah, okay. That's a really good question that I (laughs) guess. Can we add Mr. Brightside to this? Of course. By the Killers. Yeah. Mr. Brightside by the Killers, yeah. Of course. Does it fit, actually? Of course it it fits. It does, definitely. In the background, like, is Mr. Bright. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Look at I him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. That's amazing. Great. Do you want to tell something to our listeners, to our to our yeah, I mean, followers? Do you want to say something? You uh, have the last word, I think. Yeah, you have yeah. the last word. Thanks yes. for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. <We> have, <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> Um, again, I just want to say, I just want to highlight something that we said before and that we all agree on uh, heavily that the key to happiness is definitely on, and I, I mean, I mean, I know nothing, right? But for us, at least, the key of happiness today is about uh, the process, not precisely yeah. the outcome, um, and about the courage of going and shining truthfully because there's room for everyone. Yeah. So, you know, g- go for it and praise on the people that support you there. Wow. There we go. Thank you so Ooh. much. Thank you. Mic drop. No, I'm not doing this. Don't do it. Please. <laughs> Don't do the mic in the world. No mic drop today, but <laughs> yeah. imagine. Thank <laughs> you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye.